Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Exciting. Praise God. Every time I walk into the house of God, I get excited. You know why? Jesus has promised to meet us here. Praise God. And that'll blow you away when you think about it. What an awesome God we serve. Amen. I want you to open up your Bibles with me, please, to the book of Matthew chapter 21. We're going to be looking at a parable that's only found once in the Synoptic Gospels and also the uh, St. John. It is a parable concerning uh, two sons. And we're going to go to the 21st chapter of Matthew. And once again, this is the only place it's recorded through verse 28 through 32. But we're going to begin reading at verse 23 of Matthew chapter 21. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. Praise God. Stand up. Stand up for God's Word. Amen. Verse 23. And when Jesus was come into the temple, the chief priest and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I and likewise will tell you, by the authority I do these things. The baptism of John, that's John the Baptist, where did it come from? Whence was it? From heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not believe him? But if we say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither can I tell you, or neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. But what think ye? I'm going to ask you a question. A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go to work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of the Father? And they say unto him, the first. And Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you that the publicans, that's the tax collectors, the harlots, go into the kingdom of God before you. For John, that is John the Baptist, came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not. But the publicans, the harlots, the sinners, that they considered the worst of that day, believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe in him. I want you to show special attention to verse 28 down to verse 32, because we're going to be talking tonight about the parable of the two sons. You may be seated. Now, I realize that Jesus Christ gave us two parables where he said a certain man had two sons. In Luke chapter 15, verse 11, a certain man had two sons, one being the prodigal son, the other one being the elder son that was still home. But here is another parable separate from the prodigal son that's talking about two sons that are ordered by their father to go into the vineyard and work. Now, verse 28 says that God pretty much, Jesus Christ pretty much said to the Jews, the leaders, the Pharisees and the scribes, 
Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. You're full of questions today. Jesus said, I'm going to ask you a question. And they asked Jesus, uh, the first question they asked Jesus in our reading was, by what authority do you do these things? By what authority, they said to Jesus, do you do these teachings and these things? Like, you know, they're asking God why he's doing what he's doing. Jesus is God. They didn't believe he was God, but they said, by what authority? And Jesus Christ said, well, let me ask you a question. You ask me one, let me ask you one. And I mean, no, when God asks you a question, you, you've had it. It's done. I mean, you're hooked. It's over. And so Jesus Christ says, well, let me ask you a question. If you, if, I, he said, if you can answer this question, then I'll tell you by what authority I'm doing what I'm doing. He said, was the baptism of John the Baptist from God or from heaven or from men? And the scribes and the Pharisees looked at each other saying, whoa, that's a hard one. Because if we say that John the Baptist was from God, then Jesus will say, why didn't you listen to him? Why didn't you do what he said? But if we say the baptism of John was from man, the people's going to stone us. The people's going to be mad because they all believe that John the Baptist is a prophet. And so they said to Jesus with their air going out of their pride, we can't answer that. And so Jesus says, well, let me ask you a question that you can't answer. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And he gives one of the most profound, we've been preaching on the parables on Sunday night, and this is one of the most shortest, most profound parables you'll find in the Bible. Incredible. It's amazing how Jesus can say just a little bit and say volumes in just a little statement that he makes. Amen? It's amazing how God can just say a verse and preachers can preach on that verse well, they have since Jesus walked the earth, and they're still blowing about what Jesus Christ did, meaning the Word of God is alive. This is not just a book that you read and you're done. As I've said last Sunday, read your Bible and read it slow and read it often because the Bible is not for speed readers. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible has so much info and so much power in it. And he asked the question. A parable is something that has an earthly story but reflects and proclaims a profound truth. In fact, a parable um, talks about alongside of a truth. And so basically what Jesus Christ was doing is he was sharing a parable up alongside these Jewish people that thought they had all the answers. Hello. And toward the end of this chapter, the Pharisees and scribes will be so enlightened that they'll say, huh, I think he's talking about us. <laughs> and he was. But notice in verse 28, he says, what, what think about this? What do you think about this? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first son and said, go today. If I say today, that's an important word, today. Go today in my vineyard. Go work today in my vineyard. And the son said in verse 29, this is something I'd never said to my dad or my mom. He answered and said, I will not. But after... My dad beat the living daylights out of me. I would repent and go do it. But that's not what Jesus said here. Afterwards, he said, he repented. Verse 29, and went. And the father came to the second son and said, likewise, go work in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I go, sir. Yes, sir, I go. But he went not. He said, which of the two did the Father's will? Which, which of them twain did the will of the Father? And they say unto Jesus, the first. And Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you that the publicans, that's the 
tax collectors, those that have turned to Roman greed and harlots go into the kingdom of God. Notice the phrase kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when you had seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. I'm talking about the parable of the two sons. And this is really rich, and I'm not even going to get close to tapping into the vein of gold that's in this. It's such a rich one. But I begin by saying the first son said, I will not. I will not. Now the father said to the son, go work today in my vineyard. That today is a very important word. Because that statement today is so important because if we don't make hay while the sun's shining, the farmers say, we're going to be in trouble. God has given us a day, today, today. If harden not your heart, today, pre- be prepared, today. We're only guaranteed of today. Yesterday's dead, gone, buried. Some of you dig it out and resurrect it and fret over yesterday, but forget it. And tomorrow's not guaranteed to you, but God give you today. And he says to this son, go today and work in my vineyard. And he answered, I will not. But then the scripture says, afterward he repented. Verse 29, and went. Afterward he regretted what he said and he went. Notice the word afterward. We're going we're gonna to tie into that phrase afterward. After he smarted off to his father. Afterward. After he said, I will not. Afterward, he repented. After he was very rude to his father. Afterward, he repented. After he was vo- uh, with pride and arrogancy, snapped back at his father and said, I will not. Afterward. I believe he represents a lot of people today that says, I will not go to church. I will not read the Bible. I will not serve God. I will not do what God tells me to do. I will be my own man or my own person. I will not serve God. Will not. And in their own bondage, in their own um, limitations, They find themselves in a life that's full of death and despair because they will not come to the one that really truly loves them and really truly will give them grace. Everybody say afterward. There's another word you need to see, and I want you to see this in Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. Go with me there, Genesis 15, verse 13 and 14. And in Genesis chapter 15, you see Abram, that's Abraham, making a covenant with God. How many understand that from Abraham came Isaac, Jacob? From Abraham came Israel. And God made of Abraham a great nation. And that's the nation Israel. But out of Abraham is going to spin off Gentile nations as well, redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, being grafted in by the person of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It might, it might encourage you to know this. Abraham was a Gentile before he was a Jew. It might encourage you to know this. Abraham was uncircumcised And when he met God, he got circumcised. When you meet God, you'll be circumcised of the heart. Amen. But Abram was promised out of him would come a great nation. We know that from Abraham, you have Isaac. And from Isaac came Jacob and the nation of Israel. And then you know there's Ishmael, where Abraham couldn't leave the handmaiden alone, Hagar. 
And because of that, gas is so expensive in the land. Now, you can blame that on a Democrat, but you need to blame it on an Arab over there, Ishmael. Hello. It got quiet in here. And God even promised Abraham, well, even though you messed up, I'm going to bless Ishmael. And out of Ishmael came the Arabian nations. But notice in this 15th chapter that Abram has given the future. Abram has made a covenant with God. That covenant was a ram, three years old, a heifer, three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Verse 9 says, take a heifer, three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old. Jesus Christ spent three days and three nights in the heart of the earth and rose again from the grave. And a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he divided them, put them piece to piece, divided them. And the Bible says that they, he was not to divide the, the, um, the birds. But he took piece by piece. The birds he divided not in verse 10. And he laid them, them carcasses in a certain way. And it probably was in an eight shape. And Abraham offers this sacrifice to God. Well, a great, great darkness, the Bible says a horrifying darkness fell upon Abram in the night. Verse 12, the sun was going down and a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, a horror, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And in that darkness, God says to Abraham concerning Israel and concerning a promise that he made in covenant. He said, verse 13, unto Abram. Know of certainty that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. This is Israel in Egypt bondage. Verse 14, and also that nation, that's Israel, or Egypt rather, whom they shall serve, it was Egypt that Israel served, he said, I will judge. And he did that through Moses and the great plagues of Egypt. After he judges, they go across the Red Sea. God brings them out of bondage. And he said, afterward, there's that word, afterward, after this bondage, after this great darkness, after this great upheaving, after the judgment upon Egypt, Afterward, shall they come out with great substance. That's exactly the picture you have of this, this son that says to his father, I will not. But he did. He did after he had enough sin. He did after he had enough of the world. He did after he had enough pain and agony. He did. Afterward, he repented. Now, that's, that's good stuff. That's good preaching, whether you're saying amen or not. Afterward, he said, I will go. Because he felt sorrowful for his sin. But notice he says, I will not, verse 29. I can't imagine anyone talking to God that way. But they do. Every day, people use God's name in vain. They have from the beginning of time. Every day, people shook their fists toward God, and they have from the beginning of, beginning of time. Every day, they have refused to believe in God, and they have from the beginning of time. Even the angels have rejected God. Some of them, a third of them that fall, fell with Lucifer. And I can't imagine God putting up with that stuff. I mean, there's lightning coming from his fingertips. The breath of his nostrils flattens mountains. One thought can erase the universe, and yet he has enough, God has enough cool, collective patience to not kill us. That's an amazing God. A hothead's not a man. A hothead's a crazy woman or a crazy man, right? Anybody ever been around a hothead? There's nothing worse than a hothead woman, but you know, hothead men are nuts too, and you do stupid things when you're hot headed. Amen? 
And God deliberately, purposely decides what he's going to do. And that brings me to my next thought. We, afterward, it's coming. Afterward is coming. Afterward is coming for the one that rejects God. Afterward is coming for the one that is unkind to God. Afterward is coming. After Egyptian bondage is coming. After the judgment of God upon Egypt is coming. After the judgment upon this world is coming. After the afflictions, after the bondage, after the heartbreak, after the suffering. Afterward, you can turn to God. And God will forgive you of your sin, even though you said, I will not. You cuss the preacher, you cuss the church, you badmouth the church, you badmouth God. You say, I don't believe, I don't want to believe, I refuse to serve God. And God just sits on his throne and says, big deal. Doesn't bother me, because afterward, you're going to have to make a decision. Hello? Let me know that afterwards pretty cool in here. It really is pretty cool. Afterward, you're going to have to make a decision. The Father God is big enough to take your insults. Look at verse 29. He said, I will not. Now, I can't imagine talking to my father or my mother that way. Because there would be an afterward. And that afterward would be horrifying. As Abraham, great darkness and horror fell upon Abram, it would fall on me too. But God is big enough for you to shake your fist toward him and say, I hate you. God is big enough to take your attitude, I will not. God is big enough to forgive you of your past. God is big enough to forgive you of your insults, your rejection of God, your rebellion to serve the world. God is big enough to forgive you, big enough to take what you dish out. He's big enough to handle your insults. Because afterward, (laughs) woo, afterward, you got a decision to make. Afterward, you've got something that you need to do. Afterward, this young man repented, and he went and did God's will. But let's look at the second son. Verse 30, the second son came, or he came to the second son, the father did, and said unto him likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. And he went not. The second son said, yes, sir. I'll go. And the guy had no intentions of obeying his father. Or if he did, he had good intentions, but it never came to pass. I think a lot of the scribes and the Pharisees had good intentions as young men, but it never came to pass. There are always people in the church. The church is full of people that is going to. I'm a goner. They've got that I'm a goner disease. I'm gonna, I'm a gonna start going to church more faithful. I'm a gonna start uh, serving God more. I'm a gonna start praying more. I'm a gonna start living for God more. Yes, sir, I will. I'm a gonna. I just wish some folks would get gone. I mean, go. If you're going to, if you're going to go, amen. And I will forget the story I heard about a woman that stood up in revival meetings. And by the way, how many remember the old time revival meetings after the revival toward the end of the revival? People would stand up and they'd testify what God had did for them. Remember them old revivals like that? Awesome. And one woman stood up and said, I aim to start serving God more. And, and some guy had heard this spiel from that woman for 20 years. Every revival went through the church. She'd stand up and say, I aim to please God. I aim to serve the Lord. I aim to read my Bible. I aim to be faithful to God. And the guy cleared his throat, stood up and said, ma'am, would you sit down? I've been hearing you for the years saying you're aiming to do this. He said, for God's sakes, woman, shoot. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Hello. You picking on the ladies. Okay, I'll pick on the men for a minute. I mean, one time when I first got saved, I, I worked at a factory, Fasco, here in Ozark. And there was a man that he'd cuss every other breath. He was one of them, I will not. You know, I, I'm not going to church. Don't have no need for that. And he said, I heard you got religion. I got saved during the night while I worked there. And uh, Galen was just a little baby and Misty was on the way. And uh, I got saved, gave my heart to the Lord. And, and I had a radical change. I mean, you know what I mean by radical change? And so I went preaching to this guy. I only had one sermon, turn or burn. I pretty much, I knew my Bible. You don't get right with God, you're going to fry. I knew my Bible. You're going to well and gnash your teeth and agonize and burn. I knew my Bible. And I cornered the guy up and I, I started in on him. He said, I will not serve the Lord. I will not. He said, that's just a bunch of nonsense. Well, it was on a Friday, and that weekend, I didn't see him. And I came back Monday night to work, and the guy runs to me. As soon as I got there, I just barely got clicked, clocked in, and he ran to me and said, look, look. He said, whatever you did to me, Friday, take it back. He said, I couldn't sleep all night. He said, this has been the most miserable weekend I've ever had in my life. He said, whatever you did to me, take it back. He said, it's, it, it just, it's just all over. I can't get away from what you said. He said, take it back. I said, too late. It's already in you. Amen. Some of us need to take the gospel and share it with people. You know enough gospel. You know, I mean, we're not... Einstein's in the biblical sense, and none of us are great theologians, but what little bit you know will tear up a sinner. I said, what little bit you know will go a long ways with sinners because they don't know anything. Amen? And so this guy says, yes, sir, I, I, I'll go. But he did not. He did not go. And, you know, the church is full of people like that. Yeah, I'll do it. Listen, the most beguiling, most deceptive, most, most uh, con artist I ever met in my life used the word sir, ma'am. Now you be careful about people that's overly polite because they may have a knife that's going to stick you in the back. People that get overly polite worry about that. Amen. Hello? Yep. Let me know what I'm talking about. People are overly polite. And, and this guy was overly polite. Yes, sir. I'll go. You know, I'll take care of it. I believe in God. God's a good God. You preach it, preacher. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm not impressed with you. Now, I love to hear people say, preach it, preacher. And some folks are watching this on live stream, and now you hate me. But you know what I'm trying to say. It's not what you say, it's what you live. It's not what you declare, it's who you are in Christ. It's not, it's not your mannerism, although mannerism is important in the church, mannerism is important outside the church, but it's not your mannerism that secures heaven for you. It's honesty, sincerity realness in your heart and that man didn't have the realness and and that that second son was a picture of the scribes and the pharisees now maybe they started out good and maybe they were sincere but it went the wrong way and jesus christ is saying to them the first son was the publicans the harlots the sinners they didn't want nothing to do with god but they repented Afterward, they repented, come, and God saved them. And Jesus Christ said, you know what? They will enter into the kingdom of God before you. Because the Pharisees and the scribes were a picture of the second son. They were the second son was busy in the temple saying, 
whole day, whole day, whole day. But yet they were ripping widows off of their homes. Not all, not all Pharisees and scribes were bad. We have a really nice one in John chapter 3, Nicodemus. He was an awesome man. Joseph Arimathea, an awesome man. So I'm not saying that all are bad. I'm just saying that the, the little group, the pack was kind of like a flock of buzzards. But anyway, but there was good people in it. Hello. And Jesus had the, had the luxury of meeting all the bad ones. But notice he says that, um, he said, which of the two did the Father's will? And they said, the first one. And Jesus Christ said in verse 31, verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Remember I preached Sunday night that the kingdom of God, only born again Christians are in the kingdom of God. Only people that's truly been born again, only the true saints of God are in the kingdom of God. Kingdom of heaven encompasses everything. From creation, God's plan. It was Nicodemus that went into the kingdom of God by being born again. And he said, the scribe, he said to, the, uh, to them, um, the harlots, the publicans, go into the kingdom of God before you. Now notice verse 32, we're going to find another afterward. Everybody say afterward. See, there's an afterward for the, for the harlot and the publican, the sinner. There, there's, a, there's an afterward for the Republicans and the Democrats. There's an afterward for all sinners. There's an afterward for all, including us. But notice it says in verse 32, And John came unto you in the way of righteousness. Jesus Christ said to the scribes of Pharisees, John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And you, when you had seen it, repented not. There's that word, afterward. You heard it, you saw it, but you didn't repent afterward. That you might believe in him. You got to admit that's, that's incredible. Verse 29, the publicans and the harlots repent and believe, and afterward, verse 29, afterward he repented and went in. But in verse 32, the publicans and the harlots repented and believed afterward, but you repented not afterward. Isn't that a beautiful parable of two sons? Now, I'm not saying that God wasn't giving the scribes and Pharisees another chance because in this parable, he was giving them every chance. And by the way, God gives you every chance because today is the day of salvation. And God says, go work in my vineyard today. Respond to me today. The day's about, the sunset's about to set. The day's about to be over. So you need, if, if you're the person I will not, then change your mind. Repent and get in and get on board and serve the Lord because there's an afterward. And if you're a, someone that's not real with God, remember that these scribes and Pharisees, they, um, I think some of them started out real. I think some of them started out really, you know, loving God. I believe in the day we live, there's a lot of preachers that are famous that started out incredibly healthy and incredibly um, uh, respected. And they loved the Lord and they served God. But over time, the money and the lures of fame and fortune has led them away from preaching the pure gospel of Jesus Christ. I will say this. There's been few, and I'll say very few, preachers that have stayed and kept their nose clean that was extremely successful in fame and fortune. Very few. Amen? Hello? I'm not saying that God can't make me rich. Did you hear that, Lord? I believe I can handle it. I believe the Lord gave me riches. Afterward, I serve the Lord. Someone said, well, you can't handle me and try me. You can't handle, well, I don't want fame. I just want the million. 
fame. You can have the fame. <laughs> Say, preacher, that's covetousness. I thought you were better than that. Listen, obviously, you haven't been around this church long enough to know that I'm not overpaid. I am overfed, but I'm not overpaid. <laughs> Judy has overfed me. She's a good cook. She does a good job. She's a good cook. And then when she doesn't want to cook, I take her out to eat. And boy, I eat well. My wife came last night. Was it last night? Yeah, it was last night. She said, I, I, I'm going to skip eating. And Josh was mowing the yard, and Josh said, he's going to skip eating. And so, you know, I'm not going to skip eating. Just ain't going to happen. I will not skip eating. And so she says, well, just go get you something to eat. You know where I went? I went to Colton. I walked in, sat down. The waitress walked up, and I said, I want the biggest ribeye you got. I want fries, and I want stewed vegetables. She said, hold on. I ain't even got my tablet out. I said, I know what I want. Glass of water, big ribeye steak, Steamed vegetables and some fries. And I enjoyed myself. I enjoyed myself immensely. Judy has not even asked me where I ate. I'm surprised. I figured the first thing she would ask when I got ready to go to bed, well, where'd you go eat? She never even asked. I think it's because she knew better than to ask. Amen? Now, my son-in-law, my daughter is coming down from Kansas City. They're doing a little bit of mini vacation. They're bringing the grandchildren, uh, Sebastian and Riker and little Finley. They're coming down, and my son-in-law has offered to take Judy and I to Lambert's tomorrow. I have agreed. I have agreed to suffer. Give you one guess what I'm going to order. The same thing I always order when I go to Lambert's. Ribeye steak, turnip greens, they cook them with vinegar in it, and fried green apples. And throw food at me, please. And they do. Amen. Last time I was there, they actually hit me in the cheek with a biscuit, a bun. I wasn't embarrassed. I was just licking my lips. <laughs> don't, let a good, don't let a good thing go to waste. But anyway. <laughs> now, I want you to know that I enjoy living and I enjoy serving God. And God is simply saying to us in this parable of the two sons, there's going to be an afterwards. And you're going to have to decide whether or not you're going to serve God, live for God. And you don't have a lot of time because it has to be decided today. You say, you mean 24-hour prayer? No, I mean God's today. The today that God's given you. You've got to be decided. And if you don't decide, then afterward, you're going to find yourself in great despair because you heard the gospel. They did. The scribes and Pharisees, they heard John the Baptist. I can't imagine ever listening to John the Baptist preach and not hitting the altars quickly. Let me know what I'm talking about. I can't imagine anyone listening to John the Baptist preach and not hit that Jordan River real fast. Amen? You know what's amazing about John the Baptist? He preached so good that he'd take him out in the water. And while they were standing in the water, they would raise her hands or lift her eyes up to heaven and say, I'm sorry that I stole my neighbor's whatever. Uh, I'm sorry that I thought these bad things and I've done this bad stuff. And I'm sorry that I committed adultery or sorry I ever did in fornication. You say, nah, read your Bible. They did. They confessed their sins in the river. Come to think of it, I don't want to listen to John preach. <laughs> But can you imagine 
And Jesus Christ said, when, when, when John preached and you didn't hearken, you, and more than that, you don't hearken to Jesus, there's going to be an afterword. And the afterword's going to damn your soul if you don't respond to what God has said. How many would agree that the parable of these two sons is awesome? It's amazing how God can say so much in just a simple, wonderful, profound, incredible, deep parable of the two sons. Stand with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you been enjoying these parables? I've been enjoying these parables. Amen. Now, you'll never guess how I got this sermon. I was sleeping, and I was preaching about two sons in a parable. And I woke up this morning, and the Lord said, two sons. I said, got it. Prodigal son said, no, you ain't got it. And so the Lord led me to this parable. So this is not the first time I preached this sermon. I preached it the first time in bed last night. And Judy slept plumb through it all. But I was preaching away. The covers were going everywhere. I was having an old-fashioned tent meeting, praising and preaching the Word. And Judy's over there, sound asleep. Amen. I wouldn't be near as brave if she wasn't, if she was in here. <laughs> Have you ever told God, I will not? Have you ever told God you were disappointed in him? Have you ever told God you were angry? Before you were saved, have you ever told God or said in the presence of God, I won't go to church and I hate that preacher and I'm not going to do that and I'm not interested in that. You ever told God that? Well, God's big enough to take anything you've ever said. And he still loves you. He's big enough to forgive your past. He's big enough to forgive you. Because afterward, he's going to bring you out of Egypt. After you're out of Egypt, after you're out of bondage, afterward, you're going to go home with great treasure. You're going to, you're going to exit with great pleasure and great treasure. That's what it says in the 15th chapter of Genesis to Abram. Amen. Altars open. We invite you to come to an altar. We want to talk to the Lord. And um, we're glad you came tonight. Don't forget, now, Sunday morning, we're going to have Explosion Sunday. And Sunday night as well. But we want to invite anyone that would like to have prayer tonight. Pray for Brother Ward, would you? Uh, Lord, to touch him and watch over him. And uh, take care of our people in our church. Thank God for the blessings.